You don't have a weight loss problem, you have a fat loss problem. So in this video, I'm gonna break down some of the myths that I hear and the most common mistakes that I see with people trying to get shredded. So if you guys don't know me by now, my name's Adam. I'm an online fat loss professional. I help career-driven men break fat loss plateaus, get very lean in body fat percentage, using a higher level form of nutrition and metabolism manipulation called metabolic priming. I have worked with over 60 guys just in the past six months, break fat loss plateaus, shred body fat, and get to the leanest body fat percentage that they have ever been. So in the description of this video, there is going to be a link with my full training on how to lose body fat using metabolic priming, and there's gonna be a ton of my client transformations and testimonials listed below that. But the purpose of this video is to break down the most common myths and the most common mistakes I see with people trying to diet and trying to lose body fat. So you don't have a weight loss problem, you have a fat loss problem, right? So most people want to just lose weight. They have correlated the number on the scale to go down and to look better. So, you know, not enough protein or weights in the equation will actually help have you degrading in muscle tissue, which is bad. So most people, what they do is they think that they need to lose weight. They need to lose you know, numbers on the scale, what that's number on the scales go down. But as you start to restrict yourself highly, you start to lose a bunch of muscle and you lose a bunch of muscle and fat at the same time, which didn't get you caught in the skinny fat phase. Right. And so a ton of people who come to me want to lose some weight. What we need to teach them is that you need, you want to lose some fat. You don't want to lose weight. We want to keep the muscle tissue that you have quite specifically scientifically because the more muscle tissue that you have the higher your metabolism is the more muscle tissue you have when you're trying to lose fat specifically the more that that muscle will push against that skin and make you appear to be very lean but if you're trying to specifically lose weight and trying to see the scale just go down then you're just going to lose a bunch of muscle tissue you're going to get caught in the skinny fat phase and your metabolism is going to crash with that and you're going to look almost sick and disgusting looking um, because you've just lost a bunch of you know, weight in general, not specifically mo like body fat. So another thing that I come across that I see in today's society, society is massive upfront dieting where people just crash their calories super quick and they lose about 15, 10, 15 pounds right off the bat and then they're, they're just absolutely fantastic, right? And they're just stoked. And then the weight loss starts to plateau. Why? Specifically because when you do that, when you cut your calories very quickly, one, is degradating to your, not only your hormones but also your metabolism, which one, will help have you plateau very quickly and then you use up all the resources that you have on your cut. So, you know, if you have 2,500 calories and you drop them to 1,800 and then you stop losing weight, then you got to go to 17 and 16. And then by that point that you're just so sick, starving, tired, and you just feel like crap that you, that you just fall off the wagon and you just rebound anyways. So what you need to do is take it more slow. Take a, a relatively more slower approach to, one, making sure to keep your metabolism intact, but also why you don't want to crash diet right wide up front because you will lose a bunch of muscle tissue doing that. So the more, longer that you're able to hold on to that muscle tissue, the higher your metabolism will be, the more food you'll be able to eat, and the leaner you will look with more muscle tissue. So think about 185 versus 150 one at 15% body fat. The 185 is going to look a lot leaner because it has muscle mass that's actually pushed against that skin and appearing very lean. So... The next thing I see is people cutting carbs out right away, right? So people just love just, you know, correlating carbohydrates with the weight loss, which, you know, when you cut carbohydrates right away, massively upfront in your diet, you will lose 15 to 20 pounds, you know, and I'm guessing if you're listening to this right now, you probably have, but that's specifically just water weight, water retention from the glycogen in, inside your body that you're kind of getting rid of in the form of, you know, not eating carbohydrates. So you lose the 15 to 20 pounds, you, you plat plateau, you start to starve because you're not getting enough carbohydrates to supplement cortisol levels, to su supplement good brain function, good sleep, and you just feel like crap and you start losing a bunch of muscle tissue again. And, you know, you just kind of rebound right back. 0.5 to 1 pound per week is standard typical for a good amount of fat loss to know that you're also retaining muscle tissue. But within that, you have to have increase in strength training as well. Making sure we put strength training in, make sure that you're working out extremely hard. Because when you're in a deficit and when you're cutting calories, the whole goal specifically should be to retain as much muscle tissue as possible and build as much muscle tissue as you can and hold on to as much muscle tissue as you can. And you have to do that with increased strength training, hitting that muscle group two, at least two times a week with a good enough volume 
to keep that muscle tissue there. So another thing that I see in today is that people track calories and not macronutrients, right? So calories affect your weight, yes, but micronutrients affect how you look. So more specifically, people want to get leaner in body fat percentage. They're not wanting to get leaner in weight. If you were 215 and you were overweight, but we flipped the scale and you were 215 but absolutely shredded, you probably wouldn't care right? So tracking macronutrients, one more specifically, is going to affect how you look. Being able to retain muscle tissue better, be able to drown out body fat, be able to burn off body fat a lot better, but also optimize hormone levels and keep hormone levels intact with the correct form of protein, carbs, and fats. So protein specifically important for retaining muscle tissue. Fat is super important in hormone, hormone regulation, but also increasing digestion and also making sure to optimize HDL cholesterol, which is the body's not natural response to human growth hormone so having a good protein goal a good fat goal and then you add a good carb goal for the transportation of the proteins to the correct body part that you're training but also retaining enough glycogen in the muscles to make sure that you're not degradating in muscle tissue also carbohydrates are the preferred energy source of the brain so having a correct balance between protein carbs fats will help you retain muscle tissue for longer will help you lose body fat quicker will help you maintain your hormone levels and will help you maintain lipid levels and everything that goes along with eating the correct amount of carbohydrates for the correct amount of energy consumption so the another great thing about tracking macronutrients is that it's more flexible it's more flexible in the spot where you don't have to follow a pdf meal plan you don't have to follow eat 200 grams of chicken and six ounces of rice at 2 p.m. No, like hitting macronutrients means that you can be more flexible with your dieting. You can go and have Chick-fil-A on your way to work as long as you track and hit those macronutrients and add them up within the day's time. So, you know, you want sustainability with your diet. If you're dieting, you want something that is comfortable. If you're constantly thinking about the stuff that you can't have, that's the first thing you're going to want to have, right? So within even my client's plans, I don't tell them necessarily that they can't do things. I say we have to have a structure around what we do, but the word can't automatically makes people think, well, this is what I want now because that's human nature. So like it's more sustainable to not only track macronutrients in that fact, but you're not restricting yourself when you're tracking macronutrients. You're just having a little bit of structure. So the next thing I see is intermittent fasting. <laughs> so this is a big one. So people think that intermittent fasting is the absolute best way to lose body fat, to lose weight. Well, quite typically, guys, it doesn't matter what time of day you eat. If you eat 4,000 calories in one sitting versus 4,000 calories throughout the, the full day, it doesn't really matter. You could, you could eat 4,000 calories in one meal on that 16-2 split that you know you guys are intermittent fasting on, or you could simply just eat four to five meals a day like a normal person, maintain energy balance, and not be extremely hungry half the day, and it wouldn't matter. So people think that restricting themselves from a time frame of eating will help them lose weight. Well, quite specifically, it doesn't matter. It just matters about calories in versus calories out. More specifically, macronutrients in, macronutrients out. So, you know, with intermittent fasting, the, the perks of it is that one, yes, you can, you know, eat when you're hungry. It's more of a comfortability mechanism. But if you're someone who's restricting themselves all day just to eat that one meal and you absolutely gorge in that one meal in that one time frame, the possibility and the chances of you overeating in calories is going to be a lot higher because you've just restricted yourself all day, made yourself extremely, extremely hungry, and now you're like a rabid dog trying to get food down because you just was hungry for the last 12 hours. So the next thing is that I don't – like people don't understand the actual proper mechanism of actually reversing properly out of a large, large deficit, increasing your metabolism so you can actually sustain it long term. Most people get down in, in calories, get down in calories, and they, they just you know give up the, the diet that they were doing and they just rebound right back. So you know if you're somebody who's – cut their calories super low and have been in a very large deficit but did not reverse out in the proper metabolic priming form to increase your metabolism to get yourself back to a comfortable spot, you probably just gained all that weight right back because your body wasn't used to it. Your body wasn't used to eating the, the same amount of foods that you were when you started. And so now when you get rid of all that weight and you start eating the same you were before you were restricting yourself in that diet – then you're just going to gain it all back and you'll never make a sustainable change. What you actually need is a form of actually raising your metabolism, increasing your hormones back to where they were so you can eat more food and you can maintain the progress that you made. And so, you know, people think that one, 
that you can just jump right back to the calories they were at or just give up the diet completely give up all the restrictions and now you're just putting yourself in this in a spot where you know with within you know a day or week's time you're eating more than you ever have on your diet and you just gain that bit weight back up and you just blow right up right so the last thing is that people think you can push past a plateau so if you're super low in calories you're under 2000 calories and you're doing a extreme amount of cardio People think that you can just keep pushing calories down and keep raising uh, raising cardio, and that's just not true. The body is an organism that is a lot, lot smarter than you are, and it will start to restrict you from burning more calories. It'll start to save calories in a form of starvation mode where it thinks that it's starving, so it's no longer burning calories. It downregulates all your hormones, downregulates all your metabolism, and so you can no longer push past that plateau, and then it starts t- tapping into muscle tissue because it has nowhere else to go. So take a human in the desert, for example. He's absolutely starving, right? So the last thing to burn as actual inner energy cells in the human body is fat cells. So as you start to highly restrict yourself for an extended period of time, you try to push past that plateau, try to outsmart the human human body, the organism that's way smarter than you are, it's going to push back. And it's going to downregulate everything in the form of you thinking you're starving, start to put body fat cells in anticipation of the energy that it needs to survive and now you're just working against an organism that's 10 times smarter than yourself what you need is to properly reverse properly prime your metabolism go back into a metabolic priming phase lower cardio reduce inflammation and you know why you're all doing this why you're trying to push through this plateau trying to ram your your fist through this plateau with tons of cardio and low to calories you're also inducing a ton of inflammation and cortisol in your body Cortisol is bad. Cortisol is bad in the body because, one, it degradates muscle tissue, but also it restricts you from losing body fat. So when the body thinks it's starving and it starts to get extremely inflamed from overtraining and from overdoing cardio but not getting enough energy in in the form of macronutrients, calories, to actually sustain hormone levels, it starts to downregulate everything, produce more cortisol, produce more inflammation, and that's when you guys get stuck with poor, poor digestion, the gut that just won't go away, and you're under 2,000 calories and you just don't know what to do because you just downregulated everything and now you're just trying to push through this plateau that's never going to happen what you need is an actual high level strategy of raising your metabolism correcting your hormones getting your back your body back to homeostasis and so then you can go back into another fat last last fat loss phase again and lose even more body fat you can't just push past a plateau it's just not possible the body's going to restrict you from doing that so if you guys are having t- trouble losing body fat, you're having trouble getting lean, you don't know how to track calories, you don't know what macronutrients scientifically are meant for you, protein, carbs, fats, calories, to maintain hormone levels, lose a shit ton of body fat, and get very lean in body fat percentage, or break that fat loss plateau, there's going to be a link in the description down below with an application to work with me. So we'll jump on a call. We'll see where you're at and where you're looking to get, and I'll see what's stopping you from getting there. And if I'm 100% confident that I can help you, I'll build you out some higher level strategy, show you look like to partner up, and see if I can help you. And if I can, then I'll see what it looks like for you. So that's in today's in today's video. Like, comment, subscribe, and go check out my free training on my metabolic priming masterclass on my YouTube channel that I am dropping new videos on higher level nutrition strategies every single day. So make sure to subscribe to this channel, but thank you guys for watching today's video.